Hello, this is Pastor Chris at uh, St. John's Lutheran Church in beautiful Jill, Wisconsin, with another In the Clock Tower as we continue on. Uh, we go on with our adult Bible school uh, that we had uh, <clears throat> this morning. Uh, we're continuing on in our seed program for SOLA, uh, that is pairing up with what our children are learning in their Sunday school class. Kind of lets us be able to have those conversations with one another and show that we are cross-generational, we are intergenerational, we are have something in which we can come together and have in common with each of us, particularly as we look ahead and we start being able to have some level of normalcy again uh, with us being able to come and uh, be a part. Uh, and uh, uh, after all this COVID and things start settling down. Uh, if you've pulled up, uh, you should be able to hit that link that was above and be able to pull up the uh, question sheet, or if you've had one sent out to you, uh, that way you'll have that available to you. If you'd like that in the future, just call the office and Rachel can send one out to you ahead of time. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's open up the opening prayer uh, that we'll find. It's A1, Lesson 5, Bible Study, The Parting of the Red Sea. Uh, let's open in prayer. Almighty Lord, you are the source of all power and might. Just as you freed the Israelites from slavery at the hands of Pharaoh, free us from our slavery to sin and death. Grant us a deep abiding faith that clings to you in times of trouble and in times of peace. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. The introduction we have on this is, Through Moses, God had sent the message to Pharaoh to set his people free from their slavery in Egypt. After relenting, Pharaoh quickly changed his mind in what is one of the most dramatic miracles in all of Scripture. God both saved his people and defeated his enemies. So let's, uh, I'm going to move my logos and we're going to read uh, Exodus 14, verses 5 through 31. If you have your Bible, uh, definitely follow along in your Bible, but also I'll have it on the screen so you can follow along there. <clears throat> Beginning at verse 5. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the mind of Pharaoh and his servants was changed toward the people, and they said, what is this we have done, that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariot, and took his army with him, and took six hundred chosen chariots, and all the other chariots of Egypt, with officers over all of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the people of Israel, while the people of Israel <coughs> were going out defiantly. The Egyptians pursued them all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them and camped at the sea by pi Haharoth in front of baal Sephon. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And they feared greatly, and the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said, in Egypt, uh, said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry, on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, so that they shall go in after them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host, his chariots and his kinsmen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord." And when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen, then the angel of God, who is going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood between them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. 
and there was the cloud and the darkness, and it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided, and the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watch the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course. And when the morning appeared, and as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen of all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained, but the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel from that day, or saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power of that the Lord used against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord. And they believed in the Lord and in in, in his servant Moses. Well, the first questions we find on on there, it says, on On reading these verses, what are some of your initial impressions and questions? What stands out to you? Uh, Some of the big things was is that the Israelites were afraid and complaining. The hardening of hearts. Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Uh, you know, there was a time where heart, Pharaoh hardened, hardened his heart, and then eventually God hardened Pharaoh's heart. So we have that reality. Uh, that's actually a good one that kind of brought up, you know, thinking about the hardening of hearts that we know are going on and have been going on t- throughout this year, throughout the years. But also we know that there are going to be more and more hearts hardened against God. It's something we pray against. Uh, the other thing that was the multitude of people and animals. Just think about how big of uh, of this would be. You know, we know that this is a large amount of people, probably you know at least about a hundred thousand or more uh, that we're looking at. As far as we don't know the exact number at this time, we do know that out in the desert, as they're wandering those forty years, there are the times when they do count, uh, and we do find out what the numbers are, and we know that they are large. Uh, at this time, we don't know exactly what the number was, but we know it was a significant amount of people. And they had all the animals and everything that was theirs, plus they had all that they had plundered. Pretty much, if you remember, prior to their escape, uh, they were they were basically told by many of the Egyptians to get out of there and were given all gold and all these fine things to take with them. Uh, basically, they just said uh, people, because they were mourning the loss of the firstborn, So the people of Israel were kind of, they were like, oh, get them out of our land, get them out of our hair. Now we know this is in the first, uh, the biblical context of this is in the five books of Moses. This is the second book, Exodus, uh, that's there. Um, traditionally, the first five books, the Torah, uh, or the books of the law, uh, they are traditionally looked at as being penned, they're written down by Moses, and uh, so they're called the Mosaic books. Um, Exodus means to leave, uh, and we know that they're being brought out of Egypt where they had been slaves. Um, you know, they'd gone there because of Joseph, uh, during the great famine. Um, and Joseph had fed them. And when they realized that Joseph was second in charge, uh, and the Pharaoh at that time loved Joseph so much that he invited all of them there. They were given their own land and an area to be, uh, and, uh, unfortunately, we know that the hearts of the uh, the people had changed as the Pharaoh changed, and as the time got between the life of when F- Joseph was alive and the newest Pharaohs, and they just saw these Israelites as being invaders, so to speak, uh, problematic. 
The first question in the discussion questions is, uh, we look at verses 1 through 4. Uh, that's just prior to it. Um, I'm a, I'll just go back to uh, my Lagos so you can see that here, uh, and we can read that. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel to turn back and encamp in front of Pi Haharath, between Migdal and the sea, in front of the Baal Zephon. You shall encamp facing it by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the people of Israel, They are wandering in the land, the wilderness has shut them in, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host, and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, and they did so. So God God was letting them know his plan. This was known ahead of time, that uh, God was not unaware of what was going to happen. In fact, God was preparing them for it. Um and uh, so we look in here and it says, uh, God's promise came in advance of what he was going to do. How does God's promise to care for us help us through scary and difficult times? Well, hopefully we would be lifted up. When we know that there are some difficult things going on in our lives, uh, we should uh, you know, the, we should lean and cling to the promise. It's good to be reminded of that. So, Because how quickly do we often forget the promises, especially when we face difficult times and situations? Uh, that's why it's always good to remind ourselves, each other, of of our baptism and the promises that were given to us by God in our baptism and the forgiveness that has been given to us by Jesus Christ. Because Satan, he likes to twist up our minds and our hearts where we we may lose sight of what God is doing. But when we truly, truly uh, turn to him and we turn to God and we look to his word, we do find that there is hope, there is promise that we are not forgotten. Uh, and as we think about that in the scary and the difficult times, uh, which, you know, some would argue, and that was brought up to here too, we think about what's been going on and what's going on in our country today, uh, is thinking and going, wow, what should we fear? What do we fear? Um, you know, we have a lot of chaos and strife that could happen throughout this week. We pray against that. We pray for peace there. But even as we look at everything that's going on, we as Christians should not be afraid. We can be concerned, but we should not be afraid. We can, because we know God is still on His throne, uh, and we just ask for His mercy and His care, and as and and seek Him out as we move forward. Uh, so. Second question was, how do you think the people of Israel felt when they saw the Egyptian chariots closing in on them? Were they in a position to defend themselves? What would you have done? <laughs> this was kind of a funny one because one of the class members did uh, put out there and, uh, you know, it's like, yeah, uh, they were probably peeing their pants a little. And I, I think many of us can relate with that. It is a little funny to think of it that way. But truth be told is you can stand firm in the faith, but you can still be scared, right? Uh, I mean, just imagine if we were looking today um, and uh, we're praying and we know God's going to do something and working us and we see tanks bearing down on us with troops and machine guns and all of this going on. How would you feel? Uh, and, and kind of putting yourself is that that was pretty much what was going on with the Israelites. Here's the Israelites with uh, older people, women, children, all, all their animals and everything there. They have a whole army of, of coming at them, walking troops with weapons in hand, uh, those that are riding on chariots being pulled at a high speed uh, with horses. Uh, this is the reality of what they, they're they being faced with. So, of course, there would be some definitely fear uh, because, uh, you know, God promises he'll, he'll deliver, but, uh, that doesn't mean it could, it might, that doesn't mean it may or may not that, that they're, that we're going to be, uh, definitely we're not going to have pain. We, we could still be hurt. Uh, and I'm sure there's a lot in their hearts, even, uh, with that, as, as we see the struggles that we face today, uh, we'd like to say that, yeah, I'll stand up and I'll be firm to, you know, having a gun pulled out or having some, our lives threatened. Uh, you know, I, I pray to be like the martyrs that are about ready to have their heads taken from their shoulders there, uh, that are singing hymns. Now they might wonder with the first one, is it truly going to happen? Um, but they know by the end, uh, what the, what the, after the first blow is struck, they know what their reality is going to be. And then still to sing all the louder, uh, is, is great, but that doesn't mean that there was no fear in their hearts. It's not like any of them were looking forward to that and they knew that it would be painful. Um, uh, and the same is true for us as Christians, that we are not guaranteed that everything will be easy, 
but we are guaranteed that we are not forgotten. Um, and uh, I, I pray personally, I would have stood up and I think everybody else is that we all would sit and pray and stay firm. You know, I mentioned, you know, the, 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 you know, asking what would we do if all of a sudden you're in church and gunmen come in and say, if you deny, if you deny Jesus and his Lord, you're free to go. Uh, how many people would leave? I, I, you know, I'd, I'd love to say no one, but you know, some would be, well, I'd rather be uh, thinking more in self-preservation. Uh, they may repent later. And we know many have in the past and there's been great fights over that, but you know, there is that truth, that reality. How firm are we going to stand? And I would love to say I would stand, I will stand firm and strong, but, uh, and I know in some situations I've been faced with, I have been able to do that. And I pray that God would give me the strength to stand strong, uh, faced with that. And that's what we, uh, that's what we're called to do, uh, as followers of Christ is just lay it down before his feet. Um, and, and seek to not be afraid, not let fear drive us. And that's really a big thing. And we need to make sure that we put that out. We are a people of faith, not fear. Um, so we should never be afraid. Uh, though fear tries to come in and take away our comfort or our joy or our spirit, causes us to lose sight of what's true. In this, uh, the next one we'll move on is in this story, what natural forces did God use to save his people? And in your own life, when you have experienced the raw power of, work, of God at work in nature, when, or when have you experienced the raw power of God at work in nature? Well, uh, in this story, we, we see what, what God uses. He uses the cloud uh, to be able to, uh, as a pillar, uh, he makes it very thick, and he uses fire also at night. But he sets his cloud to get, set a barrier. So basically, the chariots, the people aren't going to come in after him because once they enter, they can't see beyond them, their, their own face. Uh, so it's going to prevent them. That's what also helped it was we knew this was a great a great multitude of people that were being moved through the dry land and the waters that were sea, the, the sea that was parted. Uh, they weren't moving, they wouldn't be moving at a great level of speed, but this pillar of cloud is one that really kept, that was a protective barrier God had given. It would prevent because the horses, they're not, they don't like to charge into things where they have no visual sight, but they can easily become confused, uh, disoriented, um, so there was that there to keep them and to help protect them. Uh, the parting of the waters, there was this use of the waters that was there. There was a wind that was used there. There was fire. Uh, God is using these natural forces. In my life, I know I've seen some pretty spectacular things. Uh, lived in, I've lived in uh, Oklahoma when uh, in 99 when the first uh, recorded F5 came through a uh, mile wide. Uh, Don and I were there throughout that process. I remember living in Broken Arrow, uh, watching the watching the storm as it's being watched by storm chasers. And Don had fallen asleep. And we'd gone to bed, and the TV was on. And I heard the sirens go off in Broken Arrow, and it was either going to go right towards Broken Arrow or it was going to go north. And I I watched as it turned north and moved north of us, and uh, we were saved and uh, from the major destruction there. Otherwise, I was going to have to wake Don up and grab our mattress and pray as we covered ourselves up in our tub, uh, hoping that nothing happened. And there were so many things that came out of that. Uh, the baby that was that was lifted up and safely placed in a tree covered in mud without any injuries. But then all the other things, I mean, there was, it was just awesome. It was an awesome display of of just the power of nature, the power of weather, uh, and uh, what it can do. Uh, another that was shared was uh, driving home in an ice storm, one after there was freezing rain and losing control at a place where there had been a major accident, um, and how God had spared them in the midst of all of that. We can find, if you really look for examples, uh, you know, hurricanes, tornadoes, snowstorms, blizzards, uh, how God's awesome power uh, is, is shown in nature um, and, and what things can happen and what can be done. 
Uh, we can examples of you know tornadoes where they jump a house. You know, neighbors, two houses are house, house one side is destroyed, house on the other side is destroyed, house in the middle is perfectly fine. It's, uh, it's just, why? It's that, wow, why did God save this one and not that? But uh, so, uh, so much to be able to think about with that. Uh, we ended the class on this question just because of time. Uh, but the next one question was, can we fear and love God at the same time? And how is that possible? Uh, one of the one one thing that was shared that uh, had been shared with others with Sunday school and things like that with children's Sunday school, talking about the fearing love God. How is it possible to fear and love God? And uh, uh, she said it was shared uh, uh, that she explained it. You love your parents. But they can have. But if you do something wrong, you you can fear their wrath, right? We love God, but we also know that He can bring greater punishment than even our parents can, right? Um, and and in some ways, fear can also show respect because uh, if you are fearful, sometimes you also are not only fearful of their wrath, but fearful of their disappointment. I could say that a lot. My grandpa's been on my heart a lot lately. Maybe it's because uh, we're moving uh, closer and closer to his birthday uh, in February. Uh, but, uh, you know, thinking of all of, uh, uh, of all the things that, um, uh, you know, that, that, that I, one of the greatest things that moved my heart uh, with my grandpa is I never wanted him to be disappointed. And, uh, you know, one time when I did truly disappoint him, um, that was a very painful thing for me. Um, and when you truly love someone, their disappointment is, is, is can be very, very painful. Um, you just don't want to disappoint those you love, especially if you have such a strong affection. Uh, and and I, I, I do believe that there, there is truth to that with all of us, right? Um, you know, we... Uh, you know, sometimes we only think of God as in, in, in the sense of that we love God uh, and we don't know that we should fear those that we truly love. Um, but when you truly love someone, the last thing you ever want to do is hurt them. And when we truly love God, that's part of the reason what should guide our behavior, not just as a, because it's sin, but that we truly love God and we don't want to do anything to hurt him his 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 love for us now his love is abounding uh and uh he is ever forgiving um we know that there can be wrath uh but ultimately uh when we trust in god with everything and let him guide our lives uh you know that's where we look at the first explanation of uh the first commandment uh, you shall have no other gods before me. And Luther asks, what does this mean? And you shall fear, love, and trust God above all else, uh, or all things. Um, we shouldn't put our trust in anything but God. And we, and because of that, that's not, we do that because we fear, love, and trust him. And he is the top in our lives. And that's really what what we we, we, we we hold that dichotomy within us, fear and love, uh, because it's done out of love. The fifth question that we didn't get on there, but we're going to cover here is, uh, do you think it took faith to cross over the parted Red Sea? In what way is a matter is faith a matter of trust, and in whom do we trust? And I'd look at is, of course, that took a lot. I mean, there had to have been a lot of faith because you're seeing a wall of water on each side of you and trusting and having that faith that God is not going to have that water crash down on you. It's kind of, you know, it's you have to have some faith and trust. You know, I've walked through aquariums where you walk and everything's above you. You have to have a lot of faith that that glass and that aquarium has been well built where you don't have to worry about any of that water breaking through and falling onto you. And we know that's usually that's very thick glass that's on a lot of those things. 
uh, like that. But there is some faith and trust there. You have to you have to put it out there. It'd be like walking across a, you know, me. I don't know. I'd have a hard time if uh, if walking on those bridges that are glass, where you can where you're walking and through, and you could see this great chasm beneath you because it's see through. I, I'd have a hard time doing that with my fear of heights. It would just drive me bonkers because uh, I don't know. It'd be I, I I've walked up. Stair, flights of stairs that are just total metal you can see through and i hate that too so i i just you know there is that trust if i needed to get across i, I think i would do i do so but i wouldn't enjoy it and i'm sure there's probably a lot of that was going on there people were going oh god please don't let the water crash down on me don't don't bury me in these waters don't drown me um it would have to take a lot of faith um but, you know, when you truly are trusting in what God is doing, uh, it, it, it's amazing what you can face, uh, what sort of things you can overcome and withstand when, when it is all laid at his feet. Uh, I mean, there are so many great miracles God has done in my life that I know would not be, uh, I, I couldn't have done that on my own. Um, but we also, I always find it amazing when I think of the Egyptians, I mean, they see all these miracles here. They've got God. He is, he, he's created this pillar of cloud that's so thick that it keeps them safe from the, and divides them from the Egyptians by day. It's, and it's glowing as red fire at night. It follows and between between them as they cross, God parts these waters and does this. I mean, when they when they even had the plan laid out for them, and they're bold enough to be and watch what God had been doing with all these plagues, and they're bold enough to go to uh, and go. What are there not enough graves in Egypt? Huh? What are there not enough graves in Egypt that you're going to bury us out here in the wilderness? Gosh, we should have been better in the what? I mean, who would think that? But here are the Egyptians, they say that. They think they have the tenacity, the gall to just speak like they do. But God still forgives them. Isn't that amazing? I don't know. I, God is definitely not me. I'd want to, I'd be smacking them. I mean, <laughs> I don't know about you. Uh, but that just to me is like unfathomable. How could they, I mean, even be able to say something like that? But see, God is good, God is wonderful. God is patient. God is kind. God is merciful. God is gracious. You think about all of those attributes of our Lord, and and thank you. You know how we should. I mean, all the reality, the words that we can say, really, truly to God, are thank you. Um. So, and, and for that reason, we we should always place our trust in God, because He doesn't fail. He keeps His word. Even if we're not faithful, he is. The next question is, the Israelites were walking on foot. The Egyptians were in horse-drawn chariots. How did God's plan affect them differently? How can the same miracle both save and destroy? Well, the, the, with, the, with, with, the, with the Israelites, they walked on dry land. They were able to part, walk on dry land across the Red Sea. At the time when the... Uh, by the time that the Egyptians were there and they were crossing on that same place, God made it mucky and muddy where it slowed them down, where they weren't able to move. It was just, boo. they were not able to work. It caused them to become afraid because they realized that God was not working for them. God was working for the, he was working for the, for, for the Israelites, the Egyptians. God was not on their side. I mean, imagine that feeling. God is not on your side. God is against you. I don't know. I just, ah, talk about your heart fleeting, right? I mean, what would happen? Oh no. God's not working on my side. What do I do now? And that's what was going on. Um, it affected them completely different. God let the Israelites, they just walked across. No problem. They didn't even lose a, they didn't lose a sandal. There was no muck. We don't even hear. It says it was dry land. 
So the water part of it, it says dry land. It doesn't say muddy land. It doesn't say God dried the land that they walked upon as he parted the sea. How miraculous. Now, and by the time the Egyptians were going, it turned to mud. It was just terrible. They couldn't make it. The chariots, wheels were getting caught up in it, weighting them down. There was no escape. And that's the same miracle. God had, they were in the same spot. They had seen, they could see the walls of water on each side. And then Moses moves his hand with the staff and the waters clap, crash together and bury them in the waters. It's a huge graveyard. And they've, uh, I was watching a study and they said they were finding some interesting things in the bottom of the Red Sea. It doesn't make sense. Oh, hmm, I'm wondering. Huh? Yeah, it's amazing though. Uh, according to verse 31, when all this was done, what effect did it have on, excuse me, what effect did it have on God's people? And uh, how does remembering God's mighty works help strengthen our faith as well? well let's go down. I'm going to look at 31 again, and I'm going to go to our Logos. And we can look there what it says. It says, Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord, and they believed the Lord and in his servant Moses. Well, we know that at least at this point, for a brief period of time, uh, the people trusted in God, Right? Uh, they feared God. They feared they saw his power and they saw what he could do and they believed the Lord and his servant Moses, so they're willing to listen. Now, we know that uh, this didn't, uh, they, this, they stepped away after a little bit. They witnessed, witnessed this great miracle and they still rebel. Uh, they turn away from God. Um, but, you know, remembering what God does, it's quick to forget, isn't it? It's easy to forget because, you know, what have you done for me lately is kind of our uh, human mantra that uh, we kind of live by in our world, unfortunately. Uh, but see, with God, it's not that. We should always look back and say, what did God do? I mean, honestly, I, I can say this. I shared it in service on Sunday or this past Sunday.